know is that uh, repeatedly rewarding desirable behaviors does lead people to get into those good habits. Uh, if you're report repeatedly rewarded for a good decision, you're more likely to keep it up. You figure out how to get it done, and then uh, once it becomes sort of innate, it's easier to keep going and you have inertia working for you. Uh, another key element of that equation is that you make it instantly rewarding in the short run. So the reward doesn't literally have to be cash, it can be making the activity more fun um, or rewarding in some other way. For instance, I've done research showing that if you uh, link indulgent novels or TV shows with exercise, people are more likely to come back to the gym because there's something they look forward to. So those are the ways that we can repeatedly reward behavior. It's, it's a vast array and if we can do that repeatedly, then people get into those good habits and, and can stick to things. Increasingly, governments are actually embedding teams within, uh, within them that focus on behavioral science. And I think that's one of the best ways that we can scale this work is by bringing it into organizations and governments having uh, advisors who think about behavioral science just as we've traditionally had advisors who think about economics and then running the large randomized controlled trials needed to figure out really what works in what contexts and, uh, and scale those best ideas up. One of the things that's a little bit hard about behavioral science though is there is, I think, more context dependence in behavioral science research than in, in traditional economics. An incentive is an incentive is an incentive is a little bit more true, though not perfectly true, um, than behavioral science. Sometimes things don't work in one environment that worked in another. Uh, so we just have to be very careful and do that testing work as we go and as we scale. I think we've seen a few things really rise to the top of that list. Um, one is in savings. So uh, savings is a problem that's, that's um, really important from a policy perspective, but it also is very behavioral. We're impulsive creatures. We want to buy that shiny new gadget instead of setting aside what we need to have security um, in old age or even in the near term. And so uh, this is an area where I think behavioral science has already had a huge impact. We've learned that uh, defaulting people into, into savings programs can be powerful. Inviting them to save in the future rather than asking them to cough up savings right now can be effective. Um, so that's one area. I think health is another major opportunity, and I've done a lot of work in this area. It turns out that 40% of premature deaths in the US are the result of behaviors that could be changed, and globally that number is quite similar, I believe. Um, and that means these are decisions people are making about what we eat, what we drink, whether we smoke, um, whether we're physically active, whether we follow guidance and get recommended screenings. Um, so all of those things just add up to make a huge impact on life outcomes. And again, and this is an area where behavioral science can be very effective because the problem is behavioral. Uh, there are big opportunities for behavioral science to, to move the needle.